This is Dr. Ravi demonstrating a modified neck dissection which is comprehensive clearance of level 1 to 5 nodes. So we'll start with the modified Schrodinger's incision by infiltrating the skin flap and then putting the incision the incision is deepened until the level of platysma the trifurcation point should have 90 degree angulations otherwise there is a possibility of flap necrosis the superior flap is elevated with cautery and the plane is subplatysmal. Couple of skin hooks are inserted and gentle traction and counter traction is given so that you are in the right plane. When you are lifting the flap, be very vigilant about the marginal mandibular nerve. Once you raise the superior flap, the posterior flap is raised again by cutting the platysma. The incision is done until the level of the clavicle. So that is the anterior flap. As this patient is planned for a composite resection, she is tracheostomized. So we just have to be careful that the tracheostomy site doesn't have any communication with the neck wound. The posterior flap is the difficult flap to raise because you do not have the platysma. So care should be taken about the axillary nerve and to identify the axillary nerve, use the greater auricular nerve as the landmark and where it encircles the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle within one centimeter you should find the axillary nerve. The second step is clearance of the level 5 lymph gland group and that is the axillary nerve. Once that is identified all the lymphoareolar tissue above and below it is completely cleared. So what you are seeing is the sternocleidomastoid, axillary nerve, that is the apex of the posterior triangle and the trapezius muscle, superior flap which is stitched up and the anterior most boundary is the digastric on the opposite side. You would sometimes faintly see the marginal nerve and that's the tail of the parotid sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle, greater auricular nerve and external jugular vein. So once you have completely delineated the anatomy, then the neck dissection starts. So you start from the apex and then slowly come lower down to clear the supraclavicular fat. The supraclavicular fat is cut from the clavicle and a plane is created and once you cut the lymphoareolar tissue, uh, one of the important muscles which you would see is the omoyoid muscle. So this is the anatomy which tells you the amount of clearance needed from the trapezius to the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Once you have done that, the third step is to clear the lymphatic levels from 2 to 4. So the sternocleidomastoid is hugged and a retractor used to give counter traction and slowly you start the dissection from the apex go lower down and be constantly vigilant about the axillary nerve. 
So your assistant gives counter traction and you hug the sternocleidomastoid muscle. As you reach the, the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, you might see some cervical rootlets which needs to be coagulated and cut. So as you go lower down, you would see the superior belly of the omohyoid which is cut to see the jugular vein. So that's axillary nerve and brachial plexus you saw between the anticus and medius muscle. So that's the posterior triangle completely cleared and the lymphoareolar tissue is passed anteriorly underneath the sternocleidomastoid and level 2, 3, 4 dissection is commenced. So once you open up the carotid sheath, we use the TLC maneuver which is basically tunneling, lifting and coagulating which helps to protect the important vessels in the carotid sheath. So that is the lymphoareolar tissue which needs to be brought back forward. Sometimes it is advisable to send the level 5 lymphoareolar tissue separately, level 2, 3, 4 separately and 1A, 1B separately so that your pathologist does not have any confusion. So you need to be aware of the anatomy of the carotid sheath and we are doing this TLC maneuver which I just mentioned which is basically opening of the carotid sheath to expose the jugular vein and once you lift it with a scissor your assistant can cut and coagulate and open up the sheath. Identify the important structures in the carotid sheath mainly the vagus nerve and the sympathetic trunk and as you lift up the lymphoareolar tissue preserving the jugular vein in this particular situation. So if it is a classical radical neck dissection you would be taking the sternocleidomastoid along with the axillary nerve along with the internal jugular vein. Here we are preserving all of them and any branches of the internal jugular vein are coagulated and cut and all the lymphoareolar tissue are lifted off the carotid sheath towards the skull base. So there you can see the vagus nerve and one or two branches of the internal jugular vein which is usually middle thyroid vein or the superior thyroid vein. Now the next step is to clear the submandibular triangle once you have cleared the level 2, 3, 4. It's important to remember that you start the dissection on the opposite side of the digastric. Uh, the submandibular gland dissection is shown in a different video. You can go and have a look. Here we dissect the submental fossa and follow the digastric. And those are the important structures and the digastric anterior and posterior belly and the submandibular triangle. In this situation, we are preserving the, the facial artery and the facial vein for microvascular anastomosis and the digastric is cut for access here um, so that we get the vein and the artery for microvascular anastomosis. So the classical submandibular dissection is done. Uh, once that is done, make sure that you preserve the vein and the artery in entirety and you have to preserve the hypoglossal nerve and the lingual loop. So with the tail of the parotid, the specimen from the submandibular fossa comes out and you can see the myeloid muscle underneath. Just, just coagulating some vessels there over the myelohyoid. So the step 5 is to 
So step 5 is to either close or go for the primary. Here we are going for the primary for taking the tumor off from the mandible. This is a T4 tumor of the mandible which turned out to be a squamous cell cancer. So we are doing the lip split. Although this video will not have too much of the details of the tumor resection, but I just want to show you that we have pre-plated the, the mandible and once the tumor resection is done, we would be doing a free fibular graft. So that is the pre-plating of the mandible and that's the jugular vein and one of the branches we would be anastomosing the free fibular flap. So in the leg your companion plastic surgeon would be harvesting the flap while the primary surgeon resects the tumor. So this is a short summary of the free fibula harvest. We have measured it and once we have done the measurement we take the composite flap which has the free fibula along with its vessels and this is inset into the oral cavity through the plating system. So we use the titanium mandibular recon plate along with the fibular bone for harvest and the vessels are anastomosed to the facial artery and vein. So that's the anastomosis. And once the anastomosis is done, um, the wound is closed. The patient requires constant monitoring post-operatively. We keep them in the high density unit for 48 hours. So this is the patient uh, after three weeks. Uh, looks fine and these are the important complications um, which you anticipate. Thanks for watching. I thank Pratibimba team uh, for making this video.